Hi, I'm Kelly Province, trainer for Solergen. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make calculations for the maximum inverter over current device uh, feeding into the service side, the line side of the utility, or into the load side of the utility, as in a net metering connection. First, let's look at the supply side, the utility side, line side connection. Whenever we're connecting into the utility side, of the service, we can go up to the full capacity, 100%. Now the service, it, it states that the service size cannot be exceeded by 100% of the overcurrent device. So we'll have to look at the inverter overcurrent device capacity when we're looking at the service. But that's the actual overcurrent device in the system. When we look at the real capacity of the utility, we're looking at the transformer. So that's the second thing we look at, but it will be the real limiter for us. Often uh, with residential systems, we have either a 25 kVA shared transformer for two homes, or we have a single transformer for a single home for 15 kVA. Either one's going to limit us quite a bit, so our inverter capacity cannot be more than 100% of this rating. So those are the two things we look at. First, the maximum uh, overcurrent device cannot exceed the uh, service capacity. And then the second, our inverter rating cannot exceed the transformer rating. Here we see a line diagram representing uh, a typical residential installation. In this case we have two meters. This is the line side of the utility and this often requires a re rebuilding of the service. Occasionally you'll find a service that has a capacity within uh, the equipment to actually tap in on the line side. So you'll have to look at the equipment, see if it's rated for it. If it is the utilities equipment, you'll have to get permission from them to make the tap. And if they say no, then you'll have to rebuild the service. So that's uh, line side connections. Utility scale are another matter. We're really not covering that here, but uh, the rules basically follow the same. Now let's take a look at connecting on the load side, the most common way that we connect in for residential and commercial systems. We're going to back feed uh, one of the main panels, so we have to look at the capacity of this uh, bus bar rating and not exceed it or exceed it only in the permissive ways that the NEC allows us to. The first rule they allow us to um, connect into the main panel is, is based on placing the inverter overcurrent device at the opposite end of the main overcurrent device or the main feed coming in from the utility. That way we're feeding two different directions, uh, feeding power in and we're not over overheating the bus bar. In this case, they want us to put a, um, a little label right next to the breaker, where we, and, and this breaker goes to the bottom of the panel. And we can't oversize, this bus bar cannot be oversized by more than 120% with the main overcurrent device plus the inverter overcurrent device. So these two devices cannot exceed 120%, and in this case it's 240 amps. Here we see a line diagram representing that calculation. Here's the main overcurrent device, and down at the opposite end, on the bottom of the panel, we're feeding in with our in inverter uh, overcurrent device. And we have exceeded the capacity of this bus bar, it's rated at 200 amps, but not more than 20%. So we're in good compliance with the code. When we determine how big of an, an inverter, how large, what capacity of inverter we can connect in, we're taking that overcurrent device and dividing by 125% to find the ampacity of the inverter. The reason we do that is because we have to size the overcurrent device 125% greater than the continuous current, so we're just basically backing in to find out what the capacity could be of this inverter. So there's option one for load side connections. Option two is actually the same option, it's just um, with a different situation. In this case, we have the overcurrent device outside at the meter base. The main loads panel, the bus bar here, does not have an overcurrent device in it. And often, when you, when you buy this separate without an overcurrent device, the ampacity is greater than 200 amps. And in this example, we're using a typical uh, load center that's rated 225 amps. 
Well, now this gives a little bit more margin. 225 amps times 120% gives us 270 amps. Subtract the 200 amps as we did before, and this leaves 70 amps. So now we have a much higher capacity for our inverter. So we have a 70 amp overcurrent device, and again, we'll divide by 125% to find the continuous current of the inverter. And this gives us a much larger capacity inverter input. Now there's another option. Let's say we have more than 70 amps in that um, example. Let's say we have two 50 amp uh, overcurrent devices from our inverter. Placing them at the opposite end of this panel, uh, as we did here, exceeds the capacity of this panel. So we have an option. We can place another overcurrent device, a main, the same size as this one. If this is 200, place a 200 in here to protect this panel. And now we can tap somewhere between here and here up to the full capacity, up to full 200 amp capacity. So this allows us another option. We do have to follow the uh, National Electrical Code tap rules. And in this case, the 10 foot tap rule says that our tap, wherever we make it, cannot exceed 10 feet in length and the rating of the conductors and all the equipment and overcurrent devices of that tap cannot be less than 10 percent of the overcurrent device. So if it's 200 amps then that would be a minimum size of 20 amp capacity. There is another option on the load side connection uh, that you most likely will not encounter if you do, if you do this option, you'll have to put the sticker on the main panel, right on the panel, and it states that with this option, all of the overcurrent devices in this branch circuit panel, uh, all the branch circuits plus the inverter circuit, cannot add up to more than the capacity of the bus bar. The only time that you would use this is if you really did have more than, uh, if you couldn't tap, if, you, if the tap option was out of the question, but you notice that the panel had very few breakers in it. In other words, it was a, um, a dedicated panel for a very low load service, but it had a high capacity rating. In this instance, all of these breakers, including the inverter breaker, cannot exceed the bus bar rating. So if this is a 200 amp bus bar rating, then all these added up cannot exceed that. If they do, I mean, if most of the time they add up to about 400 amps, but if they do exceed that, then you're relegated to the 40 amp at this point, 120% of this capacity. But if they don't, then you could go up to a, a much larger capacity, as in this example, 100 amps. If there were no branch circuits whatsoever, and this panel was here just for future options, then you could, ex you could go up to 100% of the capacity. So your inverter over current devices could be up to 200 amps. So like I said, you won't find that very often, but there, there is that option. And this label must be placed on the cover of this panel. Well, that, uh, that wraps up all of the options, uh, with the exception of some utility scale connection, but um, as far as commercial and residential connections, that is it. And I hope this is beneficial and you enjoyed it, and uh, thank you very much.